Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings Tumblers here. So a few weeks ago, I asked in my Facebook group, what do y'all wanna see? So several people came back to me saying the rust technique. So I've actually got a couple that I wanna show you, but I'm gonna start with this one today. And you guys could probably guess that I'm gonna start with a layer of vinyl. So I found this design pattern set that were all like rustic, rust, diamond plate patterns that look definitely like you could put on a guy's cup. So I'm actually gonna start with that and then I'm gonna kinda do like a patina rust effect on it. So you definitely could just use the vinyl. It's beautiful in itself as far as when you're looking for something that's rustic and manly, it definitely just the vinyl patterns would do. But I kind of decided I wanted to do a little touches of it and then I kinda went crazy with it on the cup but I love the way it ended up looking. And then you could go with a guy's decal on this. So I almost did a mechanic decal on this and then kind of at the last minute, I decided that I was going to go with the floor outline. I had a cup sitting in front of me that Susanna Renaud from Glamour Tribe Customs had made for me, and she did a floral outline. And so I just kind of started thinking about what could I add as a feminine touch to the cup that wouldn't take away from kind of the overall design of what I was going for. So I almost did the palm leaf outlines, and then I couldn't really find a seamless pattern that I was completely happy with. So I ended up doing a floral, and I love how it turned out. Um, I didn't put a decal on it per se because I thought maybe I'll add somebody's name or something like that. You can always just kind of go from there. But anyway, so I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, I will list all the products that I use in the description box below. So make sure you check out those links. I'll include some discount codes for y'all too. Please subscribe so you don't miss my future tutorials. Thank y'all so much for watching and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm actually starting out with my sheet of rust vinyl here from the Vinyl Cottage. I will link it in the description box below. And they come with a white border. So I just like to go in and take my cutter and just trim off that white excess right there because I know I kind of want this one to blend as well as I can. So I want that white gone. So you can see here, this one I decided to do at a diagonal so that the colors would fade into each other. Now when I started it, I anticipated that I was going to leave more of the vinyl showing and then as I get to working on the cup, I just kind of, I wanted it to look like it was going to flow. So when I originally started, I thought, well more of the vinyl is going to show, so I want to make sure that the seam is not too abrupt, that it does kind of blend in. So I just cut a little slit at the top and the bottom once I got it to where I wanted to and then I just kind of freehanded here um, the line where I'm going to cut it off. And then when I have it lined up like I want it, I'm just going to take a little piece here off the backing and I'm going to trim that and then get it lined up on the cut before I continue to pull the backing off and um, wrap the vinyl around the rest of the cup. And so you'll see me here, I'm just going to go trim off this one little tab here so I can just make sure that I've got it lined up before I pull the backing off and make a big mess. <laughs> Doing it that way, I just like to put just a little bit on the cup first just to make sure it's lined up. And then once I've got it lined up on the cup, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start pressing down on the vinyl from the bottom to the top or whichever way you like to hold the cup. I kind of like to hold the cup where I'm going from one end to the other here. And I'm just going to press down and make sure there's no air bubbles, especially because I'm going in a diagonal here and I've trimmed off a little bit here and there. I just want to make sure that it's going to lay flat. And then I'm just going to allow me pressing the vinyl onto the cup to peel the backing off at the same time. So sometimes you'll have to reach up into there and kind of get it going, but usually once I get started and the backing's pulling off, it'll just go right around. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no bubbles or creases at the top and the bottom are the main things. And then once I get it almost back around to where the seams are going to meet, I am going to take my piece of tape and a painter's tape and I'm going to lay that down right offset of the seam here. And then I'm going to continue to lay my vinyl down on top of that. So when I do go in and trim that off, if you've seen me vinyl wrap a cup before in <laughs> lots of my previous videos, you know, I'm a terrible trimmer. I cannot cut in a straight line. So the tape is a big help for me.
And then I, once I get that vinyl laid over the tape, I am just going to go in with my craft knife and I'm just going to trim right along that seam. So it just gives me something just to press the craft knife right up against so I'm able to trim it off fairly straight. And then I'm going to go in and trim off the top here. I'm just going to trim it right around the rim. I usually go back in after I've gotten the top and the bottom trimmed off. I usually go back in with my craft knife and do one more swoop around the top just to make sure there's no jagged edges and it's pressed firmly down so when I go to put my epoxy on it won't lift. And then I'm going to move right into applying the vinyl around the bottom and this is a great on this 24 ounce plump these plumps are great because they have a little seam around the bottom where the vinyl will lay just right down in it so i'm just going to pull it i'm actually just cutting off some excess here there was just a little bit too much that were, was going to get in the way and it was going to get stuck together so i just pull it with one hand and press it with the other so i'm pulling with my right hand and i'm just pressing down with my thumb basically from the side of the cup around to the bottom just to make sure there's no creases there because that's where you run into trouble when you go to apply your apply if there's a crease there on the side and then I just run my craft knife right around that ridge that's what's great about these plumps from from the steel magnolia is that ridge and then the vinyl will just lay right down in it so I use my fingernail to press it down and here I'm just going back and taking my craft knife and any places that I have a little air bubbles I just kind of touch it with my craft knife and then just press it with my finger right out and then I'm gonna go into a layer of vinyl, I mean a layer of epoxy here, and I'm gonna use about 20 milliliters of Countercultures Artist Resin Medium Viscosity. So I do use the medium viscosity on this, and it's just about 20 milliliters. I eventually just wanna coat before I go in and start adding my um, paste here. So then I am gonna go in and just start applying, these are like patina effect paste from Prima Marketing, and I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do this. At first, I just thought I was gonna kind of apply these at the areas that match the color. And then as I started working on the cup, I just started trying to make it where it flows more naturally. I didn't really have a rhyme or reason. I knew I just wanted to look distressed. And then I really liked the colors on here, but as I got to working with the paste and the colors, I decided that I was gonna end up covering up more of it than I thought I was. So you definitely don't have to cover up as much as I did with the paste. It was just more of like a natural flow. I didn't want it to look, I didn't want you to be able to tell where there was a straight break from the vinyl to the effect that I was given. But I definitely, you, and you don't even have to add anything to this. You can just use the vinyl, put a decal on it. I think it would be totally amazing like that. I just wanted some depth in it, so I thought, let me add a little bit to add some texture to it. So I'm going to use the mint green and then the brass, and then I use an apple barrel of just acrylic paint and turquoise, because that's what I happen to have on hand. So there's really no rhyme or reason. I'll just let you guys watch. I just kind of work it in. I do this one first, and then I'm going to go in with the brass, and then I'm going to add the turquoise last, and then I just continue to take my brush and just kind of work it around. This is not per se like a chip brush, but it is a small round brush that's equivalent to what a chip brush would be. It's just a stiff bristled brush. And I'm just kind of dotting it around there and then I start mixing in the brass and basically I was trying to add that around the edges and then come back in with the turquoise but I just kind of kept working with it working with it working with this so I went around the cup and probably I spent I don't know 45 minutes or an hour of just trying to get them to blend in and um, so I hope that you guys like what I came up with I probably covered up a lot more vital than I anticipated I would but it was just the way in my mind that it made it kind of flow And I will list these pastes and the paint that I used in the description box below for y'all. And you can see I basically just keep working them until I feel like there's some sense of flow. So you can layer these on top of each other. You can see I'm dipping them kind of in all three paint colors at a time, at times, to make them, you know, flow better on the cup. I just didn't want a harsh break in them anywhere. 
And then after I've got these applied, I didn't wait but about 30 minutes and they were dry and I went right into, I'm actually going to use Counterculture's Fast Set here. I'm going to do one coat of that and I use about 20 milliliters of Counterculture's Fast Set and then I let that dry for about three hours, if even that, probably three hours though. And then I'm going to go into a coat of Counterculture's Artist Resin Medium Viscosity. So I use our medium viscosity on the second coat. I don't video, I don't film it, but I did apply a second coat just because I'm going to go in and put the vinyl and I want it to be smoother. So I, then I let that coat dry for about six to eight hours before I'm going to go in to apply my vinyl decal. So this is the vinyl that I'm going to use. And it's like a textured wood grain. So I will link it in the description box. So I cut it out with the width and the height of the cup and I've weeded it out and this pattern I just bought is a seamless pattern seamless floral pattern on Etsy um, I'll also link it in the description box below and I'm just applying my transfer tape and I'm trying to line it up as best as I can with the grid lines so I'll be able to line it up pretty square on the cup so I'm just applying my transfer tape I'm going to pull the backing off and then I'm going to reline up the floral seamless pattern with the bottom edge of the paper so when I sit it up next to the cup, it'll line up with the bottom of the cup. So you can see here, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make sure that it's lined up with the bottom edge of the backing. So it, when I lay it up against the cup, it'll be square. And then once I have that lined up and on the cup square, I'm just going to go ahead and start applying my decal. And I'm just going really, really slow here because I want to make sure that it's going to go smooth on the cup. And just in a, when you have a pattern like this, because it's not, it's not a full pattern because of an outline, it seems that it wants to bubble up a little bit. And I apologize here just from working with the cup. I kind of go out of frame here a little bit. So I apologize in advance for that. But you can see it sometimes it just wants to bubble up. So I just kind of go back over several times before I continue to go around just to make sure that it's pressed down anywhere. And usually if there's any kind of air bubble in there, you can press it down pretty easily. But I just don't want to get to the end of the cup and have issues like that. So I go ahead and try to do that as I'm going around. And here I do go out of frame. I apologize, y'all. I was just so focused in on trying to make sure this pattern was going to lay flat on the cup that I just totally forgot about where the camera was and I was focused on getting that vinyl to lay flat. So I apologize. And then once I do have it laying down, I'm just going to carefully remove my transfer tape. I'm really careful with this because sometimes there will be a piece or two that want to pull up. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm carefully pulling it up without ripping any of the vinyl. And then I'm going to use part of the vinyl that was left over that I cut off for the circle on the bottom. And I cut this at 2.75 inches in diameter. And I just cut it out of the vinyl and I'm just placing it on the bottom here. And then I am going to go right into my next layer of epoxy. And I'm going to use Counter Culture's Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. And I'm going to apply that coat. I'm going to let it dry for about six hours, and then I'm going to go into a second coat. And after I'm done with that second coat, I'm going to let it dry and cure, and we have our final design. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I will list all the products that I use in the description box below. Um, I just thought this was kind of a fun, quick little take on the rust. I do have another one coming in a few weeks, so y'all stay tuned for that. Um, make sure you join my Facebook group, Dixie Darlings Tumblers. Share your creations with me. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with it with this using this technique so please share your creations i love to see them like share comment subscribe all that fun crazy stuff so you don't miss my future tutorials um, i appreciate you guys watching ask any questions on anything i wasn't clear on and i'll see y'all again soon mm -hmm.